Ralph Lauren is one of the most popular clothing and accessories brands in the world. With a net worth of over $7.5 billion, it's safe to say that the company isn't just well known, but also incredibly profitable. And the entire empire that is now known as Ralph Lauren was actually started by a poor boy from the Bronx. His story is completely inspiring and almost unbelievable. And it shows how, with hard work and a dream, anyone can become an American billionaire and icon, and maybe even change the world. In the Bronx, New York City, on October 14, 1939, Ralph Lipschitz, who would later change his name to Ralph Lauren, was born to Frida and Frank Lipschitz. The two were Ashkenazi, Jewish immigrants, who had come to New York from Poland to make a better life for themselves and their children. His early life was pretty normal for a young Jewish boy in the Bronx. Although the Lipschitz weren't wealthy, and in fact lived in a small apartment where Ralph had to share a room with his siblings, the now billionaire looks back on his childhood with fond memories. It's said by many that while Ralph was in high school, he was admired by his classmates for his unique and distinct style and usually wore outfits that were impeccably put together, especially compared to the other kids in the neighborhood. But of course, stylish clothes cost money, and as Ralph wanted to look as good as the stars he saw on the big screen, he decided that he would get an after-school job so that he could buy the clothes he really wanted to wear. Luckily, his part-time gigs didn't negatively affect Ralph's schoolwork, and when he graduated from high school, he went straight on to enroll in Manhattan's Barack College. However, after only two years in the business school, Ralph decided that school wasn't for him after all and left to get a job. But before he could jump into the workforce, Ralph was enlisted in the military. He served in the United States Army from 1962 to 1964. And although the USA was at war with Vietnam, Ralph was never sent overseas to fight. So when his time was up in 1964, he decided to get straight to work in fashion, as he had always dreamed of. His first job after his time in the Army was as a sales clerk at the department store Alexander's and he also worked for Brooks Brothers and Rivets, a popular necktie company. Ralph did well as a salesman, but his true entrepreneurial spirit became apparent when he started purchasing ties from the company and then selling them at a huge markup to his friends to make extra cash on the side. By the age of 28 in 1967, Ralph was working for another tie manufacturer, Bo Brummel, and it was this relationship that led to opening the Ralph Lauren Corporation. It was clear to Ralph from a young age that he was extremely interested in fashion, and by the time he was in his 20s and working for various companies, he realized that he didn't only want to wear what others had designed, he truly wanted to design clothes himself. While many people have to wait years in order to get a chance to fulfill their dreams, Ralph's opportunity came when he was only 28 years old. Essentially, Ralph convinced the company president at Bo Bremel to let him design his own line of neckties. So Ralph decided that he would make it official and start his own corporation under which he would design, produce, and sell the ties to Bo Bremel to sell to customers. Luckily, Ralph's passion for fashion and work ethic made the company a success almost from the very beginning. But it wasn't easy. Ralph was working from a single drawer in a showroom at the Empire State Building, and he was delivering the ties himself to Bo Bremel and other stores. His ties were considered unconventional as they were wide and brightly colored. They certainly stood out on the shelves of every store they were in, and by the end of the first year, Ralph Lauren was a well-known necktie company, just as the ones he had worked in as a sales clerk not so long before. In 1968, Ralph decided to take a risk and designed a line of menswear called Polo Ralph Lauren. The clothing had a European-American vibe and was promoted as leisure wear with a sporty edge. Only a year later in 1969, the popular department store Bloomingdale's purchased the exclusive rights to sell polo clothing and accessories, which was the first time that the store had given a designer their own in-store boutique. By 1971, Ralph was designing women's wear as well as men's, and it seemed that the company was becoming the great success that Ralph had always dreamed it would be.
Throughout the 1970s, Ralph continued to grow his business and created many of the iconic designs that are still being sold today, such as the polo shirt with the polo player on a horse stitched on the right breast. In addition to the polo shirt, Ralph also essentially invented the t-shirt as we know it today. His short sleeve athletic shirt without a collar was the first of its kind. And while the first few had a large polo logo on it, soon he started making them with the smaller logos we recognize today. Interestingly, Ralph told Oprah in an interview that he had never played polo or even been to a real match. He simply liked the look of the player and wanted to portray that his clothing was both classy and sporty. And Ralph didn't stop there. He soon branched out from men and women's fashion to create bags and accessories, homeware, and even fragrances. Throughout the 80s and 90s, styles changed drastically throughout the US, but instead of falling behind, Ralph Lauren was able to keep up with the changing times and create new and exciting fashion that both critics and the masses continue to love. And in 1986, the very first Ralph Lauren flagship store was opened in the Rhinelander mansion on Madison Avenue. The store was beautifully designed and was really an experience more than just a store. With his success, Ralph was asked to make the clothing for several important events, such as the Americans' uniforms at the Olympics, the costumes for the cast of The Great Gatsby, and even the outfits of the main characters in the Oscar-winning film Annie Hall. At the end of the 1990s, the Ralph Lauren Corporation officially became a publicly traded company, and Ralph himself made hundreds of millions of dollars in just one day. Though Ralph was extremely careful to ensure he and his family continued to hold over 90% of the voting rights and 46 million shares of the company itself. Over the years, Ralph Lauren was able to keep his designs classic while still keeping up with the times. He had several incredible ideas such as creating luxury lines, the teddy bear motif, and the American flag knitwear that kept people purchasing the new and interesting Ralph Lauren looks. However, he never strayed too far from his original look when he designed his very first line for polo. And in addition to ensuring his company continuously sold chic and preppy designs, Ralph himself is known as a fashion icon in the business. His personal style is considered classic and timeless, but with a bit of flair. Ralph has appeared on over 100 magazine covers, donated tens of thousands of dollars to charities, started charities under his name, and has given huge donations to various members of the Democratic Party over the years, including Barack Obama. He is widely regarded as one of the most handsome, hardest working, and most fashion forward men in the business. And although today he is 83 years old, these characteristics all hold true. In business, Ralph has become one of the most successful men on the planet. And his personal life doesn't seem to have been negatively affected in any way from this accomplishment. In fact, Ralph is still married to Ricky Ann Lowerbeer, who he married on December 20th, 1964, just six months after meeting her in a doctor's office, where she was working as a receptionist. The two had three children together, Andrew, David, and Dylan. While David went on to follow in his father's footsteps and became the vice president of Ralph Lauren Corporation, the other two owned their own businesses instead of working with their father. Ralph spends his time at his cattle ranch in Colorado, adding to and protecting his incredible automobile collection and continuing to pay close attention to the Ralph Lauren Corporation to this day. He has won several awards for his designs, including the Cody Award in 1970, as well as several more in the years after, an honorary doctorate of fine arts at the Pratt Institute, various medals, humanitarian awards, and many more. While Ralph is certainly a very healthy 83-year-old man, he did have a health scare in the 1980s when he had to have a large brain tumor removed. But this struggle in his life only led Ralph to donate more of his incredible fortune to cancer research and treatment, possibly saving tens of thousands of lives. The Ralph Lauren brand is currently worth almost $8 billion and Ralph himself has a net worth of over $6 billion. And maybe because Ralph still holds the position of executive chairman, the company continues to do extremely well, 
and stay both true to itself and push the boundaries of fashion forward every year. In addition to being sold throughout department stores around the country and the world, there are more than 200 Ralph Lauren stores in the USA and over 150 around the world that sell only the brand's unique designs. It is incredible to think that this fashion empire that is now known and worn all around the world all started with a necktie salesman from the Bronx with a love of fashion. But that is exactly what happened. Ralph Lauren is not only one of the most successful and richest fashion designers on the planet, he is also considered one of the most important icons in the business. And with his designs over the past 70 years, he certainly changed the world of fashion forever. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the teenager who invented America's largest chocolate maker.